My name is Dave Scheiber. I am the environmental educator here at the Nature Institute in Godfrey, Illinois. It is cicada season right now. We, if you haven't heard, <laughs> we've got the 17 year cicadas here on our property and they are everywhere. So. There's two noises going on right now. There's the high pitched kind of drone that they kind of do during the morning time mostly. And then you might hear the more rattly sound that they make as they move into the afternoon where they're starting to call for mates. It's like house music, but it's called trance. And it's exactly like this stuff. You know, you have the, you have the sort of the, the wave, the wow, wow, and then you have the dee, dee, dee. My name is Tad Yankoski. I'm the senior entomologist at the Sophia M. Sachs Butterfly House in Chesterfield, Missouri. And we are about all things cicadas right now because we are sort of in the middle of the cicada boom here in the St. Louis area. And we are in Faust Park where our butterfly house is located and it's been a great place to see cicadas. I'm not having a good time. They're very loud. Um, I was excited about the idea, but now I'm not. They've landed on me a number of times all over me. Um, in the West County area, it's a lot of them. So they're landing on your clothes while you're eating all over the place. Um, and they're kind of too loud for my liking. So no, I'm not enjoying them at all. Famously this year, there were two broods or groups of cicadas that emerged at the same time. Here in St. Louis, we have Brood 19, which is the 13-year cicada. Further north, in Illinois, around Chicago area, right now they are seeing their first big emergence of a 17-year cicada, a separate brood. This is the first time that both broods came out at the same time since Thomas Jefferson was president back in 1803. I'm gonna go up here and get one real quick. Oop, maybe not that one. Let's try. There's one making the noise as it flew by. Here, let's try this one. So here's one. You can, these are much smaller than the ones that come out every year, the annual cicadas. They're a black carapace or shell, or the shell, and then they got their orange wings and the red eyes, orange legs. The annual cicadas are about twice as big, usually about this big here, very green, with more of a clear, wing as opposed to the orange there. If we look at the bottom here, you can tell this is a male because there's no, like there's like a tube here if it's a female. And that's their ovipositor that they use to lay their eggs after they've mated. These guys, when they're in this form, they are completely harmless. They don't even have mouths to bite with. They sacrifice their ability to eat when they become adults. So they store up all their energy while they're nymphs living underground for 17 years. They dig and they suck on tree roots. They only drink what's called the xylem type sap, which is low nutrient. So that's one reason why they think they might spend so much time underground is that they're just, they need to because their nutrition is kind of low compared to other annual cicadas. They're not exactly 100% sure how they know 17 years have gone by. They know it has something to do with soil temperature change fluctuations. How they count, they don't know that for sure. But when they come up, they'll come up from a hole in the ground, they'll burrow to the surface, they'll find something to perch on that's vertical, and they'll open up their exoskeleton, crawl out, inflate their wings, darken up, and then fly off in search of a mate. So all the energy they have is from when they're a nymph, when they're a baby, basically. So they can't eat anymore, as I said, so they're just looking for a mate. And it seems like their evolutionary strategy for survival is to come up with such huge numbers that essentially the, the strategy is you can't eat all of us. My dog is obsessed with them. They're everywhere. <laughs> mm. 
we cooked up a bunch of these. We actually cook them as the nymph stage. We find they taste a little bit better. So we collect them at about eight o'clock at night as they're crawling out of the ground. We pluck them off the trees. We put them in the freezer to sort of put them to sleep and euthanize them. And then we cook up the nymphs. Really you take any recipe that calls for shrimp, substitute cicada nymphs, and you're gonna be pretty fine. We've been doing a lot of cicada scampi, which is butter, garlic, a little bit of white wine. You can't go wrong. They're great as an appetizer on bruschetta. It'll get people's attention. They taste pretty good. We found that for the nymphs, when you cook them up like cicada scampi, they have the texture and taste of sun-dried tomatoes. A lot of people expect them to be really crunchy and hard. They're actually very savory, pretty juicy, and, and pretty easy to eat. It seems to be like that's their thing. They, they're here to be eaten. I can't complain because I've been cooking them all month long. They're trying to mate and stuff too, but they're here to be eaten. Uh, perhaps a, a cruelty-free veal, just try a cicada. Some side effects of there being so many of them is that all the shells will enrich the soil. They say trees will have a better growth year this year from all this the decaying adults and their uh, shed exoskeletons. Things that would normally be eating on like caterpillars are gonna eat on these guys. So next year they say there could be a, a more of a butterfly population because uh, a lot of the caterpillars were not preyed upon and able to grow to adulthood. So we'll see. The sidewalks were black with them. I had to like sweep my way to the car. I had to have a towel over my head so my hair wasn't full of them because the air was just thick. And there was an ice cream store downtown that was making cicada ice cream until the health department closed it down. So we have here another periodical cicada and this is a female and they're actually pretty easy to tell apart once you know what you're looking for. Is if you look at the tip of the abdomen on the underside, she has this special appendage here which she uses to lay eggs and they work sort of like scissors where she'll get a thin branch on a tree about the thickness of a pencil and she'll cut a groove in the tree branch with that piece right there on her abdomen and that's where she deposits the eggs. If you're an old person like me, it reminds me of the old 1950 War of the Worlds. This is kind of the sound that the alien ships made the entire time. And then when they actually do their mating call sound, that kind of sounds a little bit more like when they're actually getting ready to shoot the, you know, the, the heat ray, you know. So if you go back to watch the War of the Worlds, you probably can hear a little bit of that. They are harmless as can be. So don't be afraid to interact with a cicada. This has been the coolest thing as an entomologist. You know, this is our Mount Rushmore of insect related things. I, I moved here 12 years ago and these are 13 year cicadas. And so I, I got here just after the last cicada peak and everybody was talking about it. And it's been 12 years in the making and it's the first time I saw a cicada, it was like seeing the Mona Lisa as an artist, you know, it was the coolest thing ever. Since then, you know, we've seen millions and millions of them, but each one is still really neat. I walk out of my house and I see them in front my front yard and I have to stop and, and just look at them again because I'm not going to see them again here for 13 years.